back uh, where it would be today, just north of Johannesburg, and we're talking about water, sanitation, water security, and uh, we're looking for suggestions and comments on how we can improve our water security, change our behaviors. What little things can we do uh, to make uh, a difference in our, our, our houses even, you know? Uh, we're hearing about how much we're spending in terms of watering our gardens, etc., etc. Maybe even um, how we use showers, uh, uh, water, etc., etc. If you have a suggestion, if you have a great water saving idea, at Morning Live SABC, tweet right now and we'll start reading them out and sharing that uh, with the rest of the country. Okay, so we're going to pick up your tweets shortly, but I just want to go to Mzwanya, it was on table 16. And uh, you're going to help us with the question that I posed just before the break, I think. Zwanya, uh, table 16. Yes, thank you, Peter. My name is, is Mzanya Ndibongo. Oh, okay. I'm coming from Kailisha Culture Development Forum in, in Cape Town. He, firstly, Kailisha was established in 1985. And we have got a sewer problem blockage all the time. Now we, I just want to ask to the minister the assistance that we can have because we've got other party that is ruling in the Western Cape. And we put our requests, demands, questions to, to, the, to the municipality. We don't get help. Kailicha is growing each and every time. Now we need to have um, a new substation that can be built because the infrastructure was made for few people and people were, were, were moved by force from Cross Road and other areas to Kailicha. What minister can help on that one? Because Western Cape is not easy like uh, other, <laughs> other provinces. Secondly, we've got a challenge of e bucket system, but minister came and launched another toilet project there. That is working very well. But you are having problems where some of the houses are not, are very far from the, from the sewer line. Now, the new technology that the Department of Water and Sanitation is coming up, we request that the minister can come back to Kailicha, more special in Saitsi. That that place was there since 1985. But people do not have toilets there. And people do not like these so-called porta porta things because it's lowering the, the dignity of the people, the people there. All right, I'm gonna ask you to say thank you very much indeed at that stage because you've asked a couple of questions. He's pointed to the Western Cape, but it's not just the Western Cape. Let's be fair, it's, there's other areas in the country where this bucket system still exists. What are we doing to deal with that? And then also, Minister, I'm gonna ask you about, are there too many cooks in the broth here? So you've got uh, f federal government, local municipality, national department, and that maybe this is part of the challenge. Minister? Yes, the, the issue of bucket eradication is something that um, Nationally, we, we, we've uh, assumed the responsibility thereof. As we speak now, um, there are a few provinces uh, that have been able to clear their uh, bucket systems in the formal townships, the formal townships, where an area is built, it is maintained and stuff. And uh, we, we are now left uh, predominantly with uh, a huge percentage remaining in the free state, amongst other things because of the historical rollout of the, of the project, where there's been a high dependence on water bond solutions. And this experience has exposed us again that a one kind type of solution doesn't work. Where you do not have sufficient water, you can't continue to assume that you can only eradicate through water board. You can have uh, low water use solutions, but you can have other new technologies. Some of the municipalities in KwaZulu Natal have already done that. We've also made uh, some interventions in some parts of the first state. We are now even making interventions in uh, all other provinces. The issue is around the realities of rapid urbanization and the 
presence of informal settlements. Mm -hmm. Government can't actually invest on bulk infrastructure or the construction of any other infrastructure in an area that is not in declared for residential purposes. But Site C in Kaelicha is one of the areas that I'm sure Minister Gordon can talk about that requires de-densification because of the high densities. That also has to remove a, an area where we have to remove people from the flood line as well. So the issues around urban planning do affect the way that we roll out uh, sanitation solutions. So on this short term of your pre-1994, I think we, we, we are moving very well and we are meeting our targets. The Northwest and Gauteng have actually oversurpassed everybody. There's no more a township, an old township. I, I always say a Ditlek township yeah. um, no longer has a... A, 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 a bucket system. What we are now focusing on, it's uh, ensuring, therefore, that even with the issues of uh, informal settlements and urban and 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 uh, urbanisation through an integrated urban development uh, uh, intervention. We must actually plan ahead of people moving in, but there must be enforcement of bylaws. And I wouldn't want to talk about the Western Cape being difficult and all those things. But for us, we are in charge of wall-to-wall -wall, uh, part of the Republic of South Africa. And that's why we have gone to Kaelicha to make these kind of interventions, like we are doing in other parts of KwaZulu-Natal, where it is another political party that is responsible for municipality because for us the responsibility is about saving people and we will go back we piloted this project in the western cape consciously because we wanted to demonstrate that we are a government of the people of south africa irrespective of uh, whether it's, a, it's, it's another party that is in charge. So we are rolling out new solutions. We have piloted this, we have seen its impact, and hence we can now adapt and ensure therefore that in the new financial year, we roll a solution that is quite sustainable. But de-densification is also one of the challenges for that particular area. Minister? Uh, in respect of your point, I mean, the, the ideal that we are trying to move towards now is that the Municipal Integrated Development Plan is a plan that incorporates, if you like, the plans of every sector, water, sanitation, housing, yeah. yep. education, health, etc. Yeah. And that delivery in a particular municipal area is on a coordinated, scheduled basis. We're not there yet, right. but that's the ambition that we have. Secondly, that must be reinforced by the right kind of spatial planning, as, yeah. as the minister was saying. In other words, how do you want to organize your city? Where do you live? If you, if you de-densify Kailicha, where do people move to? Mm. Uh, and in this particular context, South African municipal planning is a bit behind the curve. In other words, in the major urban centers, people are moving in faster than we can yeah. plan for the move. Yeah. So our ambition must be that in the next three or so years, planning at a local level, spatial planning and urban planning must move ahead of the yeah. curve. So as people come in, they know where to actually go to and, and reside. Thirdly, uh, we are in the process of concluding an integrated urban development framework that again re-emphasizes the question of uh, guiding spatial planning. So how do we move away from the apartheid spatial patterns, which are you live in one corner of a city, you work in another corner of the city. Transport costs in South Africa are horrendous for working people. Up to 40% of some people's income on a weekly basis is spent on transport. So we've got to give a lot more attention to that particular area, but change the configuration of the way in which business location happens. So today we are now talking about township economics mm. uh, or the economy of the township. Until now we thought that's where people live. You go and buy your goods somewhere else and shop somewhere else and work somewhere else. We, the world and South Africa is moving towards a much more integrated picture. So, yes, there are many hands in, in, in the pot, mm -hmm. but uh, the President created in the last State of the Nation address an interministerial task team on service delivery. It's beginning to gain momentum. We're beginning, at least the core five or six departments are working together as one team now, and I think we will see a lot more progress in the coming year. Okay. Let's go to table 13. Uh, the tip is there. Table 13. Okay, table 13, if you could stand up, we'll get a microphone to you. Ah, there we go. You're not on 13 anymore. <laughs> All right, there's a question there. 
see. Migration even happens here. You are standing now. Yes. <laughs> Unplanned. Table migration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, thank you. Uh, ministers and Deputy Minister, thank you as well. Uh, my question is about, you know, us as South African maybe have to undergo a serious paradigm shift. I find it strange that uh, the water that I use in my house for my toilet, bathing, shower, and drinking comes from the same pipe. Yeah. And I'm saying, you know, there's something wrong there because uh, we should be having water that can be recycled for usage of such lower functions like toilet, bathing, shower, and the like. And drinkable water should be preserved and, 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 and need to be regarded as, as, as a priority of perfection. So I'm starting to think, Minister, how about maybe indulging in some form of a not just a study or, or, or an undertaking to ensure that we focus more on recycling water for usage, for watering plants, for all that other, those other aspects, and preserve drinking water for what it is deserved to, to do, to be drinkable. And I think uh, we need to move, shift a gear, upper, uh, upper gear towards that. Let's separate water that is drinkable from water that we can use for other purposes. Thank you. Okay, so that's an interesting thought. Exactly my point uh, yeah. in my opening remarks, and thank you very much for raising yeah. that. Because uh, part of what we are looking at uh, through our own research institutions and the team that we have put um, in terms of uh, looking at the long-term solutions is to, is to look at uh, how best we can reclaim um, uh, some of the quality water and redirect it for better use. Secondly, is to, is to really massively use the, 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 the grey water that, that we have. And, um, and it, it is in that that we are working with uh, our research institutions, the quality assurance bodies, and the, and the construction sector, the built environment, to say things can't continue this particular way, including the, just the, the volumes of the water that we use for, for flushing your yellow stuff in your toilet, including your brown stuff. Um, <laughs> so you, you have to look at uh, different, uh, different options. The water you use in your shower, you can actually recycle and divert. So correctly so. This is a revolution that South Africa must enter into, and it requires every South African to, to be really um, amenable to change what used to be uh, and, and appreciate what must be so that then we are able to adapt. The last thing is around uh, embracing innovative solutions. We're looking at uh, working together with our research uh, institutions, various innovative solutions. Simple thing, if everybody in this house, uh, in this room today, can, uh, I don't know how many of you have got more than one toilet, but looking at the nature of your dress, I'm sure you've got more than one toilet in your house. Um, imagine if you, you take just a block almost a brick, and you put it in your system, you would have saved two liters of water that is in your system that you use to flush your yellow stuff. Secondly, if we talk about uh, reducing the time we spend uh, remove in, in terms of uh, uh, and being in a shower, we can be in a position to make a difference. Um, everybody can see we've been painted with this makeup. I can afford wet wipes. Why can't I actually use that? So we definitely have to look at different solutions. How to wash your hands. You don't need a, a full basin to deal with those things. But the most important thing is to start by the things that we know. If 36% of water in Johannesburg is used for irrigation, something is not right. We must deal with our golf estates. But if we're going to the festive season now and everybody will be home, let's use water wisely. We can make a big difference. Our public facilities must actually be the ones that lead by example in just sorting out a leaking tap. Fourthly, we need to make sure that our enforcement capacity, particularly for the polluter,
become much more enforceable. We can't have an abattoir in the first state actually messing up our water quality and they just run away with murder. Um, we've acted where there's been a, 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 a maladministration by our own government uh, officials. In Bloomoff, we had to make the city manager to, to pack and go a day after babies died because of uh, contamination in the system. And, and we therefore need to also be hard on the mining sector, on the irrigation sector, on anyone who's actually messing up. But in other normal democracies, each one of us becomes a patron for water saving. And we need to talk to one another on how to change our own habits and do, and do things differently. And every day, let's find new solutions, let's be innovative, and, and, and be able to use platforms like these ones to, 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 to empower communities on what the solutions should be. Let's also not forget, we can be talking about water scarcity for those who have had water for years. But we have some people in this country until today who have not yet had access to quality water. Mm. They must not be forgotten. Mm. That mother Mini up there in KwaZulu Natal, or that uh, Mrs. Mudise somewhere in Zerast, we must also give them hope because we can't be locked on dealing with those that have had perpetual access at the expense of those who also deserve to say South Africa belongs to all those who live in, in it through access to quality water and decent sanitation. So as we deal with the challenge, we must also be making sure that we give hope to those that have not actually been saved yet. Redress is quite important in terms of water availability. All right. Uh, Minister, I know that uh, you understand numbers as well, and I'm just wondering, and maybe if you share this with the public, we might start to change behavior. Um, we're struggling with our GDP, and I'm just wondering, this water situation must be having an impact, economic impact on, on our economy. And if, I don't know if you have any idea just, just how severe it is. Well, well certainly, um, if, you, if you look at our GDP, uh, agriculture as a share, uh, as a contributor to GDP has been dropping for some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think now it's about 2 or 3% of, of, of GDP. Uh, what this will do is, is if, if the drought continues into early January, it will affect our crop for next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, it will reduce agriculture's uh, contribution to GDP. So the 1.5% of growth or whatever we're looking at might, might be impacted unless another part of the economy uh, begins to compensate. The second is that when our own grain production drops, then we import. Mm. So we can either import two out of eight million tons of maize or six out of eight million tons of maize. Uh, and that then begins to affect our balance of payments. So you've seen the recent numbers, uh, trade numbers from SARS, which mm. show that in the last month or so, we've imported a lot more than we've actually exported. And that, that then affects the, the current account. If you link that to uh, what the European Central Bank is going to do tomorrow uh, and apprehensions around their own form of quantitative easing, mm -hmm. and then I think a week later uh, what the Federal Reserve of the United States is going to do, so the whole world, let alone South Africa, and particularly the emerging markets, uh, are going to be confronted by the usual problem, which is that people who have money uh, invested in these economies suddenly get an inverted commas short-term fright and you have a huge capital outflow uh, back to the United States, which is seen as, as a safe haven. And uh, we, we're talking about a lot of money. The other day I came across this figure of about $46 trillion floating around, around the globe uh, in cash terms, which means this is the cash that is chasing short-term yield. Mm -hmm. So if you can offer me half a percent or even 0.1 of a percent more, I come to you. If she then says I up it by 0.15%, then I'll come to her. Mm -hmm. And the minute somebody else offers, I take the money away from you and go there. And that's what's impacting mm -hmm. on emerging markets uh, in, in, in the world today. So you can see all of the linkages mm -hmm. uh, that, that we have. But as uh, Azar Jamin was saying on one of the, your competitor TV, radio yes. shows, uh, yeah. TV shows the other day, whilst these are difficulties, these are not difficulties which amount to us being in absolute crisis. We are in a low growth path, as the Minister of Finance has been saying. And, and the real question is, how do we create hope and optimism 
and greater confidence in ourselves and our ability to manage this economy? And how do each of us uh, raise our production levels, one? How do we become a more export-orientated economy? Because that's when you can get the balance right between imports and exports as well. And we should be seizing the opportunity of the devalued rand. Uh, you know, a few years ago, we were being told by some commentators, if the rand wasn't uh, that appreciated, we would be exporting a lot more. Well, the rand is uh, very uh, devalued at the moment. Where's the exports? Why aren't we exporting? We said we will export into Africa. Why are the business people in South Africa not taking those opportunities and increasing our export basket? Yeah. So those are, I think, important uh, issues to look at in a constructive way so that we positively apply our minds to that and say, how do we get ourselves out of this mode? All right, so we're going to take a break, and at this point, we're going to say thank you very much indeed uh, to Minister Godan. He has to go to the Afri Cities uh, Summit, which is taking place, where we've got uh, a number of mayors from around the world uh, converged in the city of Johannesburg uh, to talk about uh, the all important uh, cities and their growth and the challenges that they're facing. So, Minister, thank you very much for joining us and sharing your thoughts with us today, and we'll be right back after this. Stay with us. <laughs> 